friend old Steve here. And Larson. Welcome back to Going In Raw. Uh, Dark Side of the Ring review time. Uh, we figure it's odd, man. This weekend, not a whole lot of uh, news stuff going on. Well, there was such a flurry of news during the course of the week. I guess uh, everybody's got a bit of a, a respite. Take a breath before uh, Mania Week next week really ramps up. You had to slow down at some point, I suppose. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, we figured we'd uh, take a look at the uh, this current season of Dark Side of the Ring. Of course, everybody's talking about the Chris Benoit two-parter that kicked off the season. And, uh, yeah, I, 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 I thought it was uh, pretty interesting stuff. There wasn't a whole lot uh, of new information. There were just small tidbits here and there that I thought uh, were of interest in terms of what's sort of new. Um, but, you know, in general with these Dark Sides of the Ring, uh, episodes. It's all about how the story is told and laid out. Well, I think it's how the story is told, and they've done a good job so far uh, uh, for, for the first season. Now, seemingly for the second season, really getting to the emotional core of the story. Yeah. Um, this one, in some respects, reminded me of the Bruiser Brody one, um, although there was uh, a, a, a large number of narrators because that one was largely Tony Atlas. Yeah. Um, but his retelling of, of what happened in that locker room in that particular episode really got to the emotional core of, of, of that story. Sure. And I think this one, he had Chavo, um, who in a lot of ways was, I've kind of felt like uh, him and then uh, Nancy Benoit's sister. Sandra Toffoloni, yeah. Yeah, I feel like they were two, like the real emotional anchors of, of, of this story because from Chavo, you get. Uh, the Brotherhood of Wrestlers, mm -hmm. that perspective, yeah, um, and 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 his proximity to not only the whole Benoit tragedy, but also his uncle's death, where Eddie literally died in his arms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that was that was that new info because I I had not heard that before. There were the the, new, the two new things, at least to me, were that, and 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 I guess in terms of uh, the Benoit story, how impacted Chris was by Eddie's death. I wasn't yeah. aware that he was completely shattered by that yeah me neither it kind of puts a uh, patrick sparks asked us that question not long ago like do you think if eddie had lived if benoit would have done this i have to rethink my answer because i was like nah i don't think so but i don't know he was hit hard yeah yeah one that. of the in my understanding one of the 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 side effects of cte is a predilection for depression or increased chances of depression yeah um so i don't know if his reaction uh, uh, to Eddie's death was fueled by that somewhat, um, or, or 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 what exactly? But it's um, it's something else when you see you hear the story of a, a guy who is by all accounts a really uh, dedicated family man, yeah. Who, despite his intense persona in the ring, is kind of the opposite of that behind the curtain, yeah. And to hear how quickly that flip switched. Well, um, yeah, that was one thing that I felt the documentary on one level failed at a little bit uh, is I feel like they glossed over the the lead up to the, the murder suicide because they kind of hint, not really hint, they talk about like in very bare minimum, at the very bare minimum, the domestic issues he had with Nancy that led up to that. Um, you know, Jer one of the more interesting things uh, from my perspective was when Jericho said it was interesting to hear what Regal had to say mm -hmm. in the tribute because he lived in the area. He pr he knew he probably knew more about what was going on and his tribute in some way sort of danced around paying tribute to the guy yeah. and paid tribute to the career. And, and that could be perhaps why it'd be interesting to know what Regal knows if he knew anything. But I do feel like for as 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 much as and I understand that they're framing a narrative that they sort of hit Kevin Sullivan with, hey, he was abusive. Nancy ran to Chris to get away from him, which mm -hmm. is probably true to a degree. Um, they sort of didn't really get too much into their domestic issues prior to the, the to the the final act to the to the. Well, and also, suicide. I don't feel like there was. The timeline they they implied was Chris was totally fine. Uh, Eddie's passing happened, and he essentially just fell into a, 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 a abyss of, of of depression and mm -hmm. anger and in grief. Yeah, and and from that, everything else sprung. Mm -hmm. Whether that timeline is accurate or not, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. definitely the narrative they kind of painted. Is that up until Eddie's passing? Like behind the scenes, Chris was like a normal dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And once Eddie passed, 
then everything fell apart. It is. It's sh- one of the shocking things to me. And and it's funny because I was giving it some pretty extensive thought when you text me this morning. I was like, hey, you want to do this? I was like, yeah, sure. Um, is making the decision to uh, do the tribute show the next day. JR was especially, um, you know, vociferous when he was saying we didn't have all the info. We didn't know that this was a situation. So we ran the show and that's on us. I don't necessarily agree that they should be given much flack for that necessarily, mainly because if you look at what are, what are the alternatives? Um, I mean, yes, somebody might have been in the room and said, hey, listen, what's the worst case scenario here? The worst mm-hmm. case is Chris mm-hmm. did this and do we want to be celebrating the guy? On the other hand, um, it's, well, what if that's not the case? Like, if we don't go ahead with this, tri- like, how how would they possibly address it? I mean, I guess you could have said, we're still waiting for these details to come through and we're all internalizing this and we're going to continue on with our show. And maybe they just have sort of a dull episode where they put on a bunch of matches mm-hmm. and they don't talk about Chris necessarily. They just sort of push until they find out. Um, so I guess that would have been the appropriate way to handle it. Instead, Well, of also going- based on, again, how the narrative is laid out in the show, it when they went into the the tribute show, it made it seem like the only thing WWE knew is, was that Chris Benoit was dead. The family was dead. Him and uh, well, the even, family. Well, even, even during the, it seemed like during the timeline leading to that show, that was still like they, they some of the interviewees were like, we didn't know anything. We just knew that Chris was dead. It wasn't until after the show happened that we found out that the family is dead. Oh, then Chris probably did it. I At thought it was. one person said that, I thought. I thought it was when Vince got on the apron and talked to the wrestlers. He said all three were dead. That's what that that was my recollection. Okay, I could okay. I could have recollected that wrong though. Okay. Um but because I there was something there was something uh on Twitter that I saw and and forgive me for not sourcing this at all, but that Meltzer had mentioned at the time that he thought it was that he had heard or or, or felt sorry it was his speculation that it might have been a gas leak. And when you hear all three, you know, the family has passed mm-hmm, away, mm-hmm. you're asking yourself, well, how does that happen? Mm-hmm. You know? And I mean, a gas leak is a totally normal thing to think because it's like, you know, that could affect the entire house, I guess, yeah, you know, yeah. or, yeah. I mean, or I'm not sure how, or something like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like in yeah. one house, how do people die? And so, but you know, you got to think, man, all, you know, three people are dead instantly in my head. Well, somebody did this. It wasn't well, this also, was an accident. Somebody you, you, did this. They, they had an interview with the uh, police officer who did the safety check or the wellness check. That was interesting stuff. Yeah. And so, you know, and there were some police photos uh, included of, 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 I would assume, the uh, forensic uh, yeah. detailing of the crime scene. Um, and, you know, he, seemingly he walked in and was like, oh, I know exactly what this is. Yeah. Yeah. Immediately. Yeah. Um, and uh, I guess at no point between what that was on Saturday. Mm hmm. I want to say, and the next Monday, of course. Uh, it I think was, it was. was sun- I think day. it was Sunday that they found the bodies. I think yeah, because that's that's when it was Saturday that Chavo got those texts yeah. from Benoit, and just and thought it was strange, didn't pass it on to anybody, and then it was Sunday during the pay per view that he finally got in front of uh, Laurinaitis mm-hmm. and 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 showed it to him, and that's when they did the wellness check. Yeah. Um. So it was interesting in in the span of twenty four hours. Uh, and granted, it's an open investigation, so maybe the police force didn't want to pass on too many details to WWE mm-hmm. uh, for the sake of preserving the integrity of the investigation. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no details seemingly beyond uh, he died. Um, and perhaps, depending on whose uh, recollection or whose telling, retelling of the events um, in the shows, we believe uh, maybe, maybe it was a situation where management knew all three had died and some of the talent didn't. I don't remember. Um, but uh, yeah, it took longer than 24 hours for those details, I guess, to get passed along to WB. And my camera froze up. I thought it was interesting to hear uh, from Chris Nowinski. I mean, we mm-hmm. had always known that he had gone on to to sort of spearhead the the CTE research movement, if you will, mm-hmm. um, which is very impressive. But it was it was, you know, and I, I would actually suggest. Um, everybody check out the talk is Jericho with Sandra Toffolini with uh, mm-hmm. Nancy's uh, sister. Mm-hmm. She was really good in this episode. I, I mean, honestly, like this, this kind of stuff is, 
You know, I mentioned earlier, I said, you know, the way they, they tell the story, but I mean, really the, the primary stuff here is the human stuff, you know, exactly. is getting the stories, the human interactions. I thought one of the more interesting, but, but no, the, the talk is Jericho with, uh, with Sandra is excellent. It's really, really good. Um, but when they asked David, did the WWE reach out to you? He says, no, only two wrestlers, Chavo and, and Chris Jericho. And of mm-hmm. course, Chavo's in the room with them. Yeah. Um, and so that was not surprising. Uh, and very disappointing that the WWE, I mean, you know, I can count, you, we can go endlessly about the number of times WWE would disappoint us with their actions. Yeah. I mean, the list is basically, it's, it's, it's of Legion. Yes. But the idea of, you know, we're going to, we're going to erase Chris Ben, we're not just going to erase Chris Benoit from, you know, the WWE, not even on the down low, are we going to reach out to his family and be like, Hey, how can we help? Yeah. In this, you know, in this, yeah, that would have been the responsible thing to do. You would, I know exactly, but they don't, they don't do that. They don't concern themselves. Sometimes. WrestleMania is a small thing to do. I know. <laughs> in the midst of a so. global pandemic, and also several wrestlers that had, had pulled out of said event. Exactly. So, uh, so that was interesting stuff. I wrote down just a couple other things that uh, I don't know if I. Uh, yeah, this was kind. Of, this was actually really kind of shocking. Um, Vicky revealing that uh, Eddie uh, overdosing for a third time in their living room. She just left him because she had called the ambulance for him twice already. Mm-hmm. And uh, and she had to take. And the most heartbreaking sentence of that whole thing was, I just went and took the kids to school. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you forget that, God, they had kids. Yep. Like, she she goes, could you imagine that, going out to your living room on the way to the front door to take the kids to school, and your spouse is there having overdosed. Yeah. And you're like... Leave it in the hands of God. Yeah. And I'm going to take them to school because, man, because I guess, yeah, no, that was, that was tough. That was heavy stuff. That was, yeah, there's a lot of heavy heavy stuff stuff. in this episode. Yeah. You're right, though. The other, the other sort of pillar of this episode, I guess, the, the, the the other major point of this episode was the relationship between, uh, uh, Chris and Eddie. Mm -hmm. Um, they really hammered that home. Yeah. They went back to their days in Japan when, uh, they apparently did not get along. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, through fighting each other every night in the ring, uh, they learn to respect each other, eventually become really close friends. Yeah. Uh, Vicky talked about how Chris would lay in Eddie's spot in the bed, holding mm-hmm. his pillow crying. And he would spend time in Eddie's gym crying, stating I'm lost without Eddie here. Um, that's a, that's a, that's a pretty deep relationship right there. Yeah. So that's kind of, kind of wonder if there's anything between the lines there, but, uh, Anyways, um, let's see here. They do talk about, you know, the idea of him possibly going to the Hall of Fame. And Jim Ross said, hell no. No, no. <laughs> That's like, and, and, you know, Malenko says the same thing. Like, you know, there, there's no way that that can happen. They do. I like that they do sort of come back around to, you know, they should they should really consider putting Nancy in the Hall yeah. of Fame. Yeah. Jericho uh, is really advocating for that. And in fact, when I when I watched the first part, I did think that the most interesting stuff was actually the the Nancy uh, Kevin Sullivan stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, that relationship seems immensely interesting, uh, you know, especially with how it ended and then how he would have dealt with the the eventual murder. That's got to be weird. Yeah, and, and I mean, just the ins and outs of him telling his wife, hey, we're going to do an angle where you're having an affair, so go through essentially all the uh, publicly facing uh, things that you are having an affair, which in fact actually led to a real affair. Mm-hmm, yeah, I mean, just the mindset to 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 put your spouse in that kind of position mm-hmm. um, is something else. The, uh, the other thing that was like pretty shocking was when they did the montage of, of, of unprotected chair shots. Oh. And Jericho talking about how he would take it by just clenching up his shoulders and gritting his teeth and being, all right, mm-hmm. here we go. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we were both avid wrestling fans back then. We were watching yeah. the entire time. We would see that stuff happen. And it, it's a lot different when you know that there's it, it's it's it is kind of shocking that it took that long for people to understand for, you know, science to to get to the point where it was like, yeah, that's going to cause long-term brain injury. That's yeah. going that's going to cause long-term brain damage. Yeah. Um it seems like the most obvious thing in the world, but it yeah. wasn't. No, and, no. I mean, I guess uh, uh, you know, the 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 extent of human knowledge as vast as what it is um in terms of a lot of neurological processes, my understanding is we're still learning uh, a whole hell of a lot 
mm-hmm. um, including about how this uh, hunk of gray matter in your skull works. Um, and yeah, it hasn't really been to the last 15, 20 years um, yeah. between, you know, the, the NFL wrestling, um, how impactful concussions are long term, even not just concussions, just repeated uh, small head trauma mm-hmm. is on the health of your brain. Yeah. Um, and uh, Nowinski had a great bit where he was talking about, you know, he was backstage at some show and Benoit sat down next to him and they had a brief conversation where Benoit seemed uh, interested in what Nowinski was working on. And so Benoit asked uh, Nowinski how many concussions he, he had had. And I think Nowinski said like eight or something like that. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and Nowinski asked Benoit, well, how many of you have? Yeah. And Benoit said, oh, well, I lost, I lost count. Yeah. Yeah. So well, they, 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 what, sorry, go ahead. Oh, well, no, I was going to say it, it was, it was comical. I, I forget the guy's name, but the guy that was sort of, uh, the, 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 the guy who was there to sort of take WWE to task on a lot of this stuff. I forget his name, but he was a writer of some sort. And he was the one who said, Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I know who you're talking about. They wrote yeah. the book. Yeah, yeah. 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 Benoit got it from uh, who who somebody originally did a move oh the diving headbutt it started with harley race he harley did race yeah he said he too was telling people don't do it because it messes up your spine well yeah. my kids saw it he started doing it yeah he had back troubles yeah and he told um, benoit don't do this and then benoit did it and he did it um so yeah uh yeah i don't know you know that was just it was kind of interesting it's like what what the heck man <laughs> he can't but man that that shot where uh jbl of course this is this match was a bit of an outlier, oh, just yeah. how much blood there was. But the JBL yeah, headshot to a uh, chair shot to uh, Eddie Guerrero, and that just like fountain yeah, spurts out. Um, that was, you know, it was like, man, what were what were they thinking back then? Absolutely, they were thinking about putting on the show, and that's one thing that Jericho uh, said. Who also comes off really good in this in this document? Oh yeah, yeah, no, um, and, and he's sort of the one of the main focal points towards the end as well, when he's yeah. sort of the impetus for bringing David and Sandra together. Um, you know, because they hadn't talked since, you know, it literally since, happened. Since, yeah, since it happened. Yeah. One thing Jericho said was that both Eddie and, and Ben Noah more or less gave their lives for the business of professional mm-hmm. wrestling. Yeah. Um, and he said that he that the thing that Benoit would be devastated most over is the fact that he almost destroyed professional wrestling because, you yeah. know, it, the, the, the media attention, the, uh, you know, all that stuff was, it was pretty hard. Yeah, it was a pretty pretty large microscope uh, uh, WWE was under at the time. Another thing Jericho said about uh, what a what a devastated Benoit is that uh, losing the respect of his peers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because that mattered everything to him. Yeah, so much of the aftermath of what happened from what he did would have would have absolutely devastated uh, Benoit, according to Jericho. So, Matthew Randazzo is the name of Ring of is the name of the author of Ring of Ring Hell, of Hell, the story yeah. of Chris Benoit and the fall of the pro wrestling. Industry. Is it Ring of Hell or Ring of Fire? Ring of Hell. According okay. well, okay, so I'm looking at uh, this is the recap from the signature spot.com and it says Ring of Hell, the story of Chris Benoit. Yeah, that's that's the I believe that's the book they Okay, yeah. They reference in the show, yeah. Um and then of course the uh the actual discovery, you you mentioned it earlier, the the they brought in the guy who did the welfare check. Uh and that you know, that was stuff that was there were details that were unsettling and and I had not heard before mm-hmm. exactly like when they actually walk through and mm-hmm. you know it was the poor neighbor who discovered uh Daniel yeah. lying dead on his bed um yeah that was all stuff that was uh it, and part of it too the uh as as morbid as it may seem there is sort of like a curiosity as to like what sort of position like how did Benoit actually kill himself like I had heard I'd read about it Mm -hmm. but they filmed you know one of their little dramatizations that are really well filmed and it gives you at least an indication of what the scene looked like in that in the gym when the cop gets there and how disturbing it would be because it was like a room of mirror it was like you know the the, the walls were all mirrors like a lot of gyms have you know yeah and uh and the cop goes in there and, and she has her gun and she sees a reflection of him and he's actually a lot closer. Yeah. He's just them. like on the opposite wall. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's like, it was a really freaky scene. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It yeah. was just a really disturbing scene. I couldn't imagine that poor cop is never going to be able to unsee that stuff. Well, I mean, another, you know, the disturbing aspect of it is, is, you know, during the course of the investigation, they looked up uh, Benoit's uh, search history. Yes. 
And one of them was most painless way to break your own neck or something. That's like that, what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Which I guess led him to fashion the apparatus, I think, with the lap pull down machine in his home gym to, to, to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, so yeah, that's, uh, yeesh. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely so much. I am very much looking forward to, uh, and I, I want to review this with you also, uh, the new Jack one. Yes. That should be really good. Yeah, we should. I don't remember. I think there's eight episodes this season. Yeah, I think um, so. We should endeavor to just, at least at some juncture, talk about all of them because the subject matter of each and every one seems fascinating. Um, yeah, no, I'm I'm fine doing this on like a on a weekly basis. I think that's yeah. yeah, fine. Uh, if people like it, maybe we can go back and do the same thing for season one. We're gonna be. I don't know. Nobody knows how the how the industry is gonna shake out over the next couple of months. So yeah. we're, we'll probably have plenty of time to fill. Yeah. Here, here, going in raw. You got that right. So, uh, anyways, let us know what you guys thought and any interesting tidbits you found interesting in uh, the Benoit two parter of Dark Side of the Ring. Uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate it. And until next time, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye. <laughs>